Hi, this is Ben from Bursack Custom Guitars, and today we're going to unbox the new Billy Joe Armstrong Signature Les Paul Jr. from Epiphone. So I just wanted to add that this video is not sponsored in any way. You know, I purchased this guitar uh, on my own from Sweetwater, and they just shipped me whichever uh, guitar was next in line. Candy, thank you, sweet water. All right, so here's the nice signature case that it comes in. Here we have Green Day's logo and obviously Epiphone branding here. Spin this around. And this feels like a really nice case too. Uh, it doesn't feel cheap or chintzy. It has a nice weight to it. The latches feel really nice, not cheap at all. And here we go. There she is. It has the signature leopard print plush here. It's Pretty nice, nice thick, it's not thin. It definitely feels like it would be really protective with the guitar. And uh, here's the guitar itself. It's like a nice vintage white kind of color. It's not like a, a very bright white, it's almost like an off white. But it feels really nice, it's just very, very well done. I don't see any issues in the paint or anything on first glance. But uh, let's uh, take a closer look. All right, so here's a closer look. We have the single P90, which is branded as an Epiphone Pro P90, with the nice wraparound bridge, having the little intonatable, semi-intonatable adjustment screws there. Got volume and tone. Both should be CTS pop, but we'll take a look at that later. So it has a mahogany slab body, mahogany neck, and an Indian laurel fretboard. And it has that beautiful, newer design Epiphone headstock that looks awesome on this guitar. And the Epiphone branded vintage style tuners. And let's flip it over and take a look at the back. Okay, and here's the back of the guitar. Not much going on here. Take a closer look at this neck joint. Looks very well done, nice and seamless. As we come up to the neck, which this is supposed to be a chunkier 50 style neck, so we'll take a look at that. We have uh, Billy Joe's signature there. And there are those Epiphone branded deluxe vintage style tuners. So as promised, I did pop off the control cover here. And getting a look in here, we do have uh, two CTS pots. They're 500K. And uh, also what's cool is that is a quick connect for the pickup. So if you did want to ever change out the pickup, it uh, should be pretty easy assuming that you can find something that has a similar style quick connect or you can just solder it up just like you would any other pickup. And uh, moving up on here, something else I wanted to highlight, which I didn't realize at first, but I thought was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if all of the new Epiphones are like this. You can kind of see it in the light here, but uh, it looks like they have the serial number stamped into the back of the headstock, uh, just like uh, Gibson actually does, so I just thought that was a really cool uh, feature. And then one final note here about the headstock. I don't know if it really can show up here on the camera very well, but the headstock logo is actually uh, Mother of Pearl. Um, it, to me, it looks like actual Mother of Pearl and not the, uh, the imitation stuff, so that's pretty cool to see that they did that little touch as opposed to just doing a decal or something like that. Again, I don't know if all the new Epiphones are like that, but to have that on here is pretty cool. And then finally, uh, another thing I noticed was uh, even though these are like the vintage style deluxe tuners, uh, they do have the more modern uh, 
hole size of about, I believe it's 10 millimeters. So if you did want to upgrade these, uh, you won't have to drill them out or anything. You can just pop these out and uh, put any, any modern uh, tuner in there. It should fit. All right, and also in here we have some of the Epiphone case candy, as they call it. It's just some uh, Epiphone sticker. We have our Epiphone guarantee. It's like an old school kind of vintage looking Epiphone sticker. I think there'd be a few stickers with this. I like stickers. So I'm cool with that. Yeah, look at this. Love the stickers. And this is just like a thing to download their, their app. And we have the case key and our little adjustment wrench, which looks like it's for the bridge. All right, so now that I've actually held it in my hand, uh, it feels really good. The neck is chunky, but I've got big hands, so it doesn't really bother me. But it's definitely chunkier than like a more, the more modern like 60s taper neck that a lot of people are probably used to. So just be aware of that. If that's something that bothers you, that if you don't like thick necks, you may not like this. You may want to try to actually get your hands on it before you buy it. But it feels really good in the hand. Um, it's not too off balance. It, you know, it, there's no neck dive when I let go of it. Uh, it has a nice heft to it, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, overall it just feels really good. The frets feel really nice when I run my fingers up and down the fretboard. Uh, the fret ends are are really really well done. Um, sometimes you know on these guitars they, they could be hit or miss, especially at this price range. It was like five forty nine, I believe is the list price, and uh, yeah, it feels really good. I'm really impressed so far with the quality and the workmanship what that went into this guitar just from sitting here holding it. Um, so let's take a listen. So my signal chain for this demo is just going to be the guitar going straight into my Line 6 Pod Go, which is going direct via USB into my MacBook Pro and recording it to GarageBand. Uh, I'll be using two different amp models. Uh, one for my clean tone is going to be a Vox AC30 style amp model with a Rettschull Tweed 1x12 IR. And then my distorted tone is going to be a boosted Plexi, uh, similar to what uh, Billy Joe actually uses, and that's going to be going into a York Audio Mesa 2x12 IR with Vintage 30s and an SM57. Thank you. 
And one of the things I really love about this guitar, uh, it, just, it just feels great. Um, I'm really happy with the purchase. Like I said, it was $549. Uh, this, I bought it with my own money. It's not sponsored or anything. I got it from Sweetwater. But um, this thing is just really top notch. And for me, uh, it's kind of a redemption story because uh, back in the day, I had the Gibson version of this. And it was actually the same, you know, white, had the leopard case. Um, and I ended up selling it and <laughs> regretting selling it. So uh, for me, this is kind of a redemption. Uh, it feels, from what I can remember, very, very similar to the actual Gibson model. The finish was a little different. Uh, the Gibson had a nitro finish. I'm sure this is some kind of a poly finish. Um, and the other one, I believe, if memory serves, had a little bit more of an open grain finish, where this is, is sealed up pretty well. You can't see any grain through uh, the finish. But um, I really do love this guitar. I think the finish is awesome. and just everything about it, uh, I really, I really enjoy. And there you have it. That's our uh, full unboxing, demo, and review of the Epiphone Billy Joe Armstrong Signature Les Paul Jr. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification. That way you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. And also be sure to check us out on Instagram at Bursac Custom Guitars. Uh, all links are in the description. Thanks for watching.